Hi there, this is Floating in Dreams and today I'm going to talk to you about my top 5, bottom 5 Lisa Eldridge products. Thank you so very much for joining me. This channel is all about eyeshadow palettes, Essence and Couture's reviews and getting the use out of my makeup. And because I love my Lisa Eldridge lipstick so much, I thought I could sort of tell you what I have tried from the brand and what I think you can try and what I think you should stay away from. So this is going to be very lipstick heavy, but Lisa Eldridge does of course have some other products as well. I haven't tried everything from the line yet, but these would be my picks for the top five and bottom five products that I think this brand does either really, really well or things that I'm like, mm, those I wouldn't pick as your per first purchase per se. And in case you don't know, I would like to point out that I have fair skin with a cool to neutral undertone, which greatly skews my makeup preferences. And because I have been creating beauty content in some capacity for more than a decade, I also have very particular favorites. So um, if you're here for the ride and you would like to join the Snow Angel Club, then definitely click subscribe down below. So yes, top five, bottom five, Lisa Eldridge. As always, I'm going to start with the bottom five, end it with the top five, because I like to end my videos on a high note. And I'm gonna make sure that uh, there are timestamps, so if you just wanna watch one section of the video, that you can. Um, in case of like, in terms of like swatches and all that, just know that I think I have reviews up for most of these, I have swatched out pretty much every single Lisa Eldridge lipstick I have. So I'll make sure to link those uh, videos and blog posts down below. So that if you wanna have a look at these in a more close up capacity that you can, but today we're just gonna be chatting about the product. So bottom five, as I mentioned at the start of the video, I have not really tried everything from the line. I've never been able to get a hold of any of her blushes or the Lorex liquid eyeshadows that she does. Very often, uh, the blushes had sold out before I could get my hands on it, and she's not bringing them back until 2023, I've heard. And the liquid Lorex eyeshadows, there just weren't any shades in the first batch that really appealed to me. So um, there are a couple of shades I am now interested in, but I haven't been able to make that purchase just yet. So there are definitely a couple of products there that I would still like to try from the brand. And she sneak peeked something over on her Instagram that she's working on an eyeshadow palette. So if she comes out with an eyeshadow palette, you know we're gonna try that. But this is going to be a very lipstick heavy video for sure. And the first bottom five are the glosses. These are the Gloss Embrace lip glosses, which on paper sound like the most amazing lip gloss you could ever, ever find. Uh, I have it in two shades. This is Songbird, which is actually my favorite of the two. And this is in the shade Muse. And I thought I was gonna love Muse more because this goes with Velvet Muse, which we'll see in a minute. It's one of my favorite lipstick shades by her. So I was like, that shade in a, in a gloss, it's a mauve pink, it's gonna be my favorite. Even though this is a mauve shade, which sh I should love, Songbird is actually my favorite because I just feel it goes with everything. This is a very good neutral gloss that I can just slap on and I'm out the door. The reason why I'm putting these in my bottom five though is because I don't love this formula. It's supposed to be super hydrating, but maybe my lips are just super duper dry for me. I just haven't felt that these are as hydrating as I'd want them to be. And I have other glosses, some of them much cheaper than these are. I would recommend look, having a look at my Catrice Better Than Fake Lips Volume Gloss video that I posted a while ago, because those are only like, what, four or five euros at the drugstore, and I love them, and they're super hydrating. And these, I just, I never felt that the texture feels really pleasant on my lips. I find them a little bit too sticky. Um, they're just not perfect. And as we will see with some of the other products I have in this video here, Lisa knows her stuff when it, when it comes to makeup and how she wants to formulate things, but she's trying to make products that are very universal, like very universally appealing. And I feel that in the case of the gloss, that's exactly what sets it back. Another bottom five, and this is mainly due to me not having the right shade in this, but that is the Elevated Glow Highlighter. So this is really, really pretty, but the one I have is in Cosmic Rose. And when I bought this, the shade down, Pink Moon, didn't exist yet. That one is much better for my skin tone. This is more of a rose gold. It's a bit dark for me. 
Can I make it work? For sure. But what I have found when I was using this is that it works best if you apply it under foundation. And I'm not much of a highlighter under foundation kind of gal. Um, I just want my foundation to already be dewy and go with that because I love a bit of dew. But I just felt that by itself as a highlighter on top of foundation, this doesn't work with all foundations. It kind of can break up the foundation that you're wearing underneath it. So I felt that this was a bit too much of a faff to use. There's just something in the formula that also makes it feel very tightening when I put it on my bare skin. So I do not recommend using this if you have very dry skin, if you haven't moisturized like properly and done all that. I feel it just has a little bit of a weird texture. I believe it has some sort of like mesh technology in here. I think that's what I'm feeling. Um, and also the shade Cosmic Rose is just a touch too dark for me. So since this isn't exactly the cheapest product, I'm sort of still on the fence. Like, should I buy Pink Moon? Because that goes with my complexion a lot better because it's a cool tone pink. Um, but I already have this and I don't want to waste this product either. So I'm sort of like, it would have worked better for me if all of the shades would have come out at the same time. And that's sometimes with the Lisa Eldridge line as sort of like products are released as they go along. It's not always the best way, but I remember that I just really wanted to try this product at the time, which is why I bought the shade from the original lineup that seemed best for me. But now we have a better shade. So... Yeah, that I would have preferred it if that had come out. So it's a very petty reason perhaps for putting this in a bottom five, but yeah, it's uh, it's definitely in the bottom five because of that. Then the rest of the bottom five consists of lipsticks. So the first lipstick that I put in the bottom five is Dance Card. And the only reason why I bought this was because I wanted to swatch out all of the luxuriously loosened uh, lipsticks for you that I had at the time. So I did that over the summertime, then she came out with like 10 new shades, which I haven't even managed to pick them all up because some of them have been out of stock and you know, budgeting and all that. I, I cannot buy 10 lipsticks in one go from Lisa Eldridge. It's a bit too expensive. Um, so yeah, Dance Card, I did purchase to round out the collection. And this is just one of those shades where I'm like, this is just too coral. It is nice. For a coral lipsticks, as far as coral lipsticks go, it is very flattering on. It's just not a shade I go for all the time. And if it wasn't like my goal to own every single Lisa Eldridge lipstick and tell you about it, I would not have purchased this myself. And I feel pretty similarly about Velvet Intrigue. This, however, was more flattering than I had expected. Now, the Lisa Eldridge lipstick range, as stunning as it is, and you'll hear me rave about my favorite shades when we get to the top five for sure, but my issue with the Lisa Eldridge nudes is that there are very few cool toned options. And a lot of the nudes are very light. This is the lightest shade she does. This is Velvet Intrigue, but Vel Velvet Fawn, Velvet Affair, they are just too light. I still want her to come out with good cool toned lipsticks because those are really, really missing, especially in the nude department. Um, and like, like a good mauve, it just, it just isn't there. Everything is pretty dark and not very nude unless it goes very light, very beige, and very yellow, which is why I'm sort of holding this one up as an example, but that's something that I feel is still a gap in the line. So Lisa, please, if you're watching this, be kind to us cool toned girlies and give us some cool, really good cool toned options in your next release. That would be lovely. And finally in the bottom five is Atomic Cherry. This is another luxuriously loosened. And this is again is down to the shade. This was sold out for a long time, which is why I couldn't do my luxuriously loosened video any earlier than I did it last summer. And this was one of the shades that I was really, really hyped up about. I was like, I'm gonna love this. It's like a very nice, bright, uh, like popsicle kind of shade, great for the summertime. And then I got it in and I just didn't find it as flattering as I had expected. So this was one where I was just disappointed with how the shade looked on me. I found out, now that she's extended it, I did try Wonder Wheel from the new uh, launch that she did over the summertime. And that is a shade that I wanted Atomic Cherry to be. So the, the, the shade descriptions on the Lisa Eldridge uh, website 
and she does use a lot of like models with different undertones to showcase all of the products which is lovely but what is often not taken into account i feel is whatever you've got going on naturally on your lips i have pretty pigmented lips myself that are very purple leaning so they've got a lot of blue veining running through it making them look pretty purple um, and that can skew especially if it's a very lightweight more sheer textured lipstick it can really skew the way things look on me not just because of how it sits against my skin tone but simply because i've got that natural lip color coming through that's the reason why i don't love dance card because dance card has the same issue for me it the shade is such a big clash with what i've got naturally going on with my lips that my natural lip colors that blue tone you don't see this in images or on camera very well but in real life you can really see that there that the shade just doesn't go together um, and I feel that that's the, 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 the reason why I didn't love Atomic Cherry as much as I hoped. Kicking off the top five then is the Lisa Eldridge, oh, what is this thing called? Oh, just the foundation, the Seamless Skill Foundation. I've kept it in the box because it's literally the only way I can keep it. Because this thing, I mean, it's very pretty, but the, how, how am I supposed to store this? Like, it sits like this if you lay it down flat, but it doesn't, it cannot stand like this in a drawer. So, it's very pretty. But, yeah, people have also said that it looks kind of like a sex toy. Um, so, <laughs> it definitely has a design element to it. And this is one that I, I am putting in my top five because I think that the way this product is designed is just so clever. Not just the, the compact that it comes in. Um, this foundation, first of all, it comes in 50 shades, which is great. That does mean that it takes a while for you to figure out what shades you might be. Luckily, she, she also sells sample cards. And if you place an order on the official Lisa Eldridge website, then you can actually order the sample cards and you will get four shades to try. Now I'm used because I have fair skin that I'm usually like the lightest shade in a range and that can still be too dark for me. I'm shade five. Th that's my perfect like skin tone match. Shade seven works on me as well if I wanna go for something darker, uh, more like a summer shade, but I ended up going with shade five uh, because that was my perfect match. And now that I have my perfect match in this, I love it. I love it. This is best applied with a brush though, or fingers. Don't apply this with a sponge because there's something about this formula that doesn't like water. Like if you have a damp sponge and you try to spread it out, this starts looking really, really cakey. And also I have found that if you use this and you have the wrong shade, it's not pretty. I don't know why. There was just something about this foundation that if I, when I was trying it out and trying to see what shade I might be, the, the right shade in this is really, really important to get it to look nice. I ended up buying mine from the pop-up store that was going on in Covent Garden over the summertime. So I was very privileged to be able to like try it in store and test it out and like see the different shades on my skin. But I already knew what the texture was like. If you have dry skin, this is not the kind of foundation also where, you know, you can really like you can build it up. I shouldn't say it cannot be built up, but if you use too much of this, it's like it again can be very noticeable on dry patches and stuff. I recommend like watch Elisa Eldridge lipstick, like lipstick, watch Elisa Eldridge makeup video where she does a tutorial and you can see how she does base makeup and that's how you should use it. Thin, very sheer layers and then this is the, one of the most beautiful natural looking foundations it's not overly dewy it's not super matte it's like that really it hits that sweet spot but it's very easily because it has a pump if i use a single i if i use a pump it's way too much product i use like half a pump and i'm good and then it looks really nice um so it is one that needs instructions <laughs> <laughs> and you have to like see like figure out how to use it for yourself to make it like to make it work but when you do this is one of the best foundations i've tried in a long time um review should be up by the time you're seeing this video but any of my like regular viewers will know how much i love my lisa eldridge lipsticks um the formulas of these are outstanding the ones that i popped in the bottom five are just not favorites mainly because of the shades 
but when you find your shade in these if you want to invest in a good lipstick these are like what 33 euros a pop um if you want to go a high-end lipstick buy these the customer service is really amazing as well my first velvet intrigue broke the moment i swatched it they sent me a new one without asking after i sent them a picture so if yours break they will very often send you a refund or a new lipstick if it happens really quickly. I'm not sure what happens if they break over time because these can be fragile because of the way these are formulated, um, but they do take care of their customers for sure. Uh, where to start here? Let me just start with the Luxuriously Lucent. So I like, there are plenty of the Luxuriously Lucents that I like. I love Kit and Mischief. I love Spirited Away. I love Rose Official. I love Love in My Life. I, I didn't think I'd like that pinky shade, but I love it. Wonder Wheel is my favorite one of the new shades she came out with. Um, and also, uh, is it Berlin Nights? Oh, I don't remember what it's called, but the Berlin shade is really pretty too. But I love Lisa Eldridge lipsticks because of undertones. Like the way she blends these shades and the way they look on me is just... I'm loving it. And my favorite Luxuriously Lucent, precisely for that reason, is this shade. And this is Painterly. And Painterly is, it's not red, it's not brown, it's not plum, it's not nude, and yet it's all of those things at the same time. So this is really nice, really sheer, comfortable, but buildable formula. You can just like, you can dot it on and then, you know, you just have a lip stain effect or you can, um, put it on full on and get the payoff that you get in the bullet. I love this shade. It's such a good fall shade. Like this lipstick is fall in the lipstick color and I have not yet found a dupe for this. I'm trying to find dupes for some of my Lisa Eldridge lipsticks. So I have filmed a couple of shorts, i.e. TikToks, so that I can show you some of these like where I feel I have found dupes for them. Um, so I will be sharing those with you throughout the month. I'm not sure when those are gonna go live exactly. Um, but yeah, Painterly is one I have not yet found a dupe for. Then one of the newer shades, and a lot of you, when they saw that these had been announced, were saying, Micah, you need to pick up Strawberry Shock because I think you're gonna love it. And this, oh my, it's a neon red. That's the only way I can describe it. This is one of her uh, insanely saturated lipsticks. We haven't discussed that line yet, but those are indeed insanely saturated. These are very vibrant shades. I also picked up New Wave from the line. And yeah, this is, this is really, really great for summer. It's such a good vibrant pop of color. And especially if you're wearing like a stripey kind of top. And then you know, today my hair is up, but you know, with, with my hair down and like a very basic neutral eye, this works marvelously, marvelously. So that's why I do really love this shade. And indeed, you guys were right. It's my favorite shade that she came out with last summer. But my two favorites are true velvets, a nude and a red. Let's start with the nude. Anybody can see this coming. This is Velvet Muse. And I'm not sure if you can see that, but what I do to lipsticks, if I use them a lot, they go like flat like this. Um, so yeah, this is, this is starting to look very much worse for wear. This is my favorite nude lipstick by her. It is pretty brown though. It is quite warm, I'm not gonna lie. Um, but I have found that this is actually the, exactly the same shade as when I went to the Bite Beauty lipstick, lip, lip Lab where I tried to build my perfect nude lipstick. And this is exactly that shade. So then you know that I'm going to love it. So yeah, I tend to, in her line, go for some of the darker, more mid-tone shades for like neutrals because it works better on me. And on me, the shade Velvet Muse, because I have that purple undertone in my lips, there's just something that happens to this that makes it work every single time. And I love it. But I think my most used Lisa Eldridge lipstick has to be velvet ribbon and this is now my favorite red like classic red in my collection this is a lot more vibrant than other reds i have i love charlotte tilbury's red carpet red that's darker than this max russian red my other favorite red darker than this i have a catrice one that i love darker than this this is a blue toned red that has that vibrancy of like 
a really good vibrant red that you can like see in fire trucks and in like you know um, if you're in the UK you know your 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 old school uh, phone boxes those kind of things um, it's really that kind of vibrant red and I have never seen anything like it in terms of red like classic red lipsticks I thought I had seen it all until I tried it and I love because I have fair skin that th this actually goes better because it has that vibrancy it's an even better contrast because I have fair skin and I love it for that reason so yeah if you want my recommendation if you were to just look into two of these Velvet Muse, Velvet Ribbon and Painterly from the Luxuriously Lucent line I think if you have those three you have your red you have a nude that is a bit more outspoken and you've got a nude that can be a nude, but it doesn't have to be a nude, and it does everything at the same time. So these three I would definitely recommend for anyone looking into this line. If you want to know where to get started with Lisa Eldridge lipsticks, those three would be my top, top picks. So yeah, I really hope today's video was helpful to give you an idea of what this line has to offer and what I've tried from it, what I would say are my recommendations for sure, and what are things where I'm like, maybe skip on these things. Um, or what I think the brand can improve on, really. So yeah, I hope it was useful. Thumbs up the video if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more by me. I make several videos every single week on here. I post on my second channel, and now I'm trying to do shorts and TikToks as well. So I, there's a lot more content coming your way. Oh, and I post on my blog daily as well. Okay, so yeah, lots more content coming your way. I hope you have a great day, everybody. Take care, and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye-bye!